Oh, man, does that look good. Okay, time for some more fun recipes. Just softening a little bit of butter. I'm going to show you how to make two different flavored butters, which will completely take, um, you know, that corn on the cob at your backyard barbecue to a whole nother level. And this is just a fun, easy um, way to look like a rock star. And you know me, I'm always trying to look like a rock star. Now, um, it's, you know, if you have the time, it's always great to pull the butter out a little bit ahead if you're going to be making flavored butters. Uh, I grew up with, you know, before everybody was all into gourmet and foodie, we just take a big old pound of butter, the whole, not the sticks, but the pound, stick it on a plate and everyone would roll the corn in that. And that's just how I grew up. And I still do that to this day. Um, so if I'm doing corn on the cob, that's how we do it. We don't take a little piece off, you know, of, and put it, give it to everybody. We just let everybody, you can't double dip though. You just got to roll in there once. Um, but that's how we do it at our house. But it's fun also besides doing the big pound of butter to roll your corn in, dripping hot, uh, is to do some flavored butters. So, and it just doesn't get any easier, but it's real important to have that butter at room temperature, or you saw me put it in the microwave for just like two seconds. You don't want to go longer than that. You don't want melted butter. So that's why I like to pull out ahead of time, but it's much easier to work with. So we're going to show you how to do two different flavored butters. So I said, when you put it in the microwave, if you have to do that in a pinch, just do it for a couple seconds because you don't want to melt it. Once you've melted it, it's just not going to work right for you to make these flavored butters. So first we're going to do our um, cilantro lime butter. Uh, earlier when we did that hot corn dip, I mentioned how the, the flavors of corn go so well with those great southwestern flavors. So this is just, you know, more of that southwestern feel. So if you're doing like a tequila chicken on the grill, um, I do a margarita chicken that I have in my cookbook. Um, or, the, you know, tequila, lime, pork chop, something like that. This would go perfectly with that. So one stick of softened butter. Then I'm taking some lime zest, and I'm just using my microplane to zest some lime. I'm using unsalted butter, by the way, and that way you can kind of control the salt that you put in there. My daughter's a big, Ireland loves unsalted butter, and she says, um, she, it just tastes, she said, Mom, it just tastes so much fresher. And then you can add your own salt and actually kind of taste the texture of the salt in there if you're using a sea salt or a kosher salt, and it really is really nice. And then I've got some fresh cilantro. So it's just a few ingredients. You can totally make this ahead of time. So again, up to even two days before you know your cookout's coming. But here again, if you're making it ahead of time and putting it in the refrigerator, get it out a good hour or two on the counter, room temperature, so that it'll come to room temperature, be nice and easy to slather on that corn. I'm boiling some water here because in just a minute I'm going to show you how to make a real fun, easy way on how to do corn on the cob. So I'm just going to turn that off and let it sit for a second. Okay, so there is butter number one, and I just like to take a, a fork, kind of mix that around in there. So lime zest, chopped cilantro, softened butter, and a little bit of salt. And then I put it in a container like this. Maybe garnish it with a wedge of lime and some cilantro, and maybe put a label on it. Cilantro lime butter. We'll do a nice cilantro leaf. If I can find a pretty one here. And a little wedge of lime. And there you go. Okay, so there's flavored butter number one. Our next one is a little more kid friendly. It's a basil parmesan butter. And boy, that combination of uh, parmesan cheese and butter little garlic, just yummy. So I've got, you can use fresh garlic, you can use just garlic powder, or even just the jarred garlic. So I'm gonna chop up some garlic. Get that in there. Grated Parmesan cheese. Right, get that in there. 
Now I want to use the grated, not the shredded. A little bit of salt and pepper. Don't need a ton of salt because that Parmesan is salty. And then some fresh basil. And again, you can make this ahead of time. Park it in your fridge. And everybody's going to be, wow, like, oh, flavored butters for the corn on the cob. Which one should I go for? Just making little ribbons of basil. All right, in it goes. Mix it up. I do a lemon chicken, and this is really good with that. Garnish it with a little bit of basil. Just again, to let everybody know what they're eating. Okay, now, I promised you the in new trend on cooking corn on the cob. We're gonna show you how to grill it in just a minute, but this is kind of the in thing. As I think we've all had that dinner party where really the star of the show is the corn on the cob. Everyone's waiting for it, but I wanna bring it to the table hot, 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 so that when the butter hits it, it melts all over. There's nothing worse than cold corn on the cob unless you're using it in a salad or something. But you know, when you want to, uh, you know, gonna serve all these great butters with it, you just, you know, you want it to be steaming hot. So um, this is a great way to do that. You don't have to be running to the deck and then back to the kitchen, and you don't have to worry about the whole timing thing because you actually um, can let this sit in the cooler for an hour and it's going to keep warm. So this is called cooler corn. So you take a very very clean cooler. Or you can actually have a cooler that's just designated for corn on the cob, and you load it up with fresh shucked corn. And I always make the kiddos do the, the shucking the corn in my house, because when we were kids, my grandmother used to say, hey, got the corn, kids? Get in the backyard, shuck the corn. That was always the kid's job, to shuck the corn. So always great stories about shucking the corn together, hanging out with my cousins uh, and my sister and shucking the corn in the backyard. Uh, so anyway, after the kids have shucked the corn, uh, you load it up in a cooler, and you can do a great big cooler if you're having a bunches and bunches of people over. And again, and it saves you know boiling big pots of uh, water on the stove, especially on a hot day. Or you know if it's just a small family, you can do a small cooler. You just want to make sure it's a really clean cooler. And then you pile the corn in there. You pour the water right over the corn. Shut the cooler. And it sits there for about 20 to 30 minutes. You drain the water off, and here's the great part. After you've drained the water off, um, and basically uh, the, there's no more water in here, that corn can sit in this cooler for an, up to an hour and stay nice and steaming hot. Look at that. So there you go. Um, this has been sitting here in this cooler for a good 45 minutes, and it's just as hot right there. So get some tongs out and serve it up and get your butter and go hog wild. Coming up, a corn and black bean salad recipe, so stay with us. <laughs>